Greetings again everybody, and welcome back to Dark Souls 2. We are now going to enter the final of the three DLCs, the crown of the Ivory King. And the entrance actually is right here. And this was always there, even without the DLC being released. The other two entrances only ever appeared once the DLCs were out. This one, not so much. But I don't believe there's any significance to it. They just chose this place because, well, they already had that weird thing there. Now well, we seem to be in a wintry landscape. I quite like the look of this area and the entire DLC. Visually, this is probably my favorite. Mostly because we haven't really seen a snowy landscape yet in Dark Souls. Well, in Dark Souls 1 we did, kind of, but it was a, a very small self-contained area. This is a very big, also self-contained area. But anyway. There's our first bonfire already. And this is actually a pretty big PvP hotspot here. You will often find summon signs here and the likes. Or invasions happening. Oh, that's a nice warning. And as soon as we enter the gates, we have quite the weather conditions. We can't really see very far. We can't even appreciate the scenery here. So we have our first boss fight already and as it turns out the boss appears to be pretty much in invisible. We can't see it um well we can barely see it. We can just barely make out the shape. But it doesn't really help much. You could still say it's invisible because in this weather you really can't see it. Ah. Dead. Whoops, we are dead. So we could defeat Ava right now, but something tells me that it might be a better choice to go explore the other direction first. Because, well, I, I suppose most things be more manageable than, a, than an invisible boss. So let's deal with that later. Maybe we'll find something that's gonna make this a, a little more doable. Which isn't to say that it isn't doable right now, I just lack the patience to do the fight, honestly. So I'm not gonna do it if I don't have to. Now meanwhile we get introduced to our first basic enemies. Those aren't really too tough. But overall, I would say that the areas itself of this DLC probably the hardest or have the toughest enemies to contend with. And yeah. Just remember the spot for later. Mm, 
Now right there we have a mysterious figure sitting on the ground, but since it doesn't appear to do anything to us, I think it's a pretty safe bet that we can just ignore it. And Dance of Fire is kind of garbage, it turns out. It doesn't really seem to actually uh, be affected by the lock-on, its range at least isn't. Which is a little bit of a problem considering that it's just a small wall of fire that happens a few meters in front of us. Uh, yeah, we can damage them, but they don't react. So, no need to actually waste our weapons durability on them. I doubt they will, like, get up and be a problem at any point. Those guys down there, though, they can be a problem. They're dogs. And dogs and all the Souls games are enemies that you should never underestimate. Though they were the most dangerous in Demon Souls, probably, but they're still pretty dangerous here. They can inflict bleed, and their attack has a fairly large range, considering that they're just dogs. But hey, in the dog pit, we find something. Well, you might consider nice if you like spears. The winged spear, as far as I'm concerned, is one of the better spears. But, yeah. There's not that many spears that I would use, actually. The silver black spear is one that I actually like when it's infused with dark. It is... It's pretty strong, actually. And... There seems to be plenty of stuff that we just can't access. Hitting those uh, icy rocks would not do anything. Now this room is one... If you go through this DLC, this is one of the rooms that you will probably see several times. Whether you actually go through it without dying or not, this is definitely a room that you will happen across at least one or two more times. But right now it's uh, fairly easy, there's not really much of a problem traversing it. There's a lot of cover and all that to actually take cover from that ranged guy. So fighting guys one on one here isn't too difficult, it doesn't even require any uh, bow and arrow shenanigans where we pull people out one by one, no need to do that here. But we now get introduced to what I consider to be the toughest enemy of the entire DLC. Because you cannot backstab those guys. They have these weird crystals on their back and you just really cannot backstab them. It's not possible. It is still a good choice to get behind them. Because obviously behind them you can attack them a couple times before they turn around. And yeah, you cannot aggro just one of those two guys. If you head to the left and attack that guy, that other one will come at you. And if you shoot that guy who is far away, that crystal back guy will also come out. So, your best bet would be to deal as much damage from range as you can to quickly take out one, and then take out the other. And as you can see here, no backstabs, but still, pretty good idea to get behind them. Those, by the way, are the only enemies in this DLC that you can't backstab. Well, the only humanoid enemies. Except for one other exception. But that won't happen until much later. Now those guys only take three arrows with the poison arrows to be poisoned. 
Which is... Well, good to know, I suppose. I guess that means that they are weak to poison. Somehow, at least. Most other enemies actually do take at least four arrows to get poisoned. Some do take more. Um, those enemies are also... Well, they're not weak to dark, but they're not very resistant to it. So if you play as a hex build, you can still come through here. And that building the distance is not something that we can reach right now. But yeah, dark damage isn't too bad here. Fire works as well, but contrary to what you might expect here, fire is not exactly the best choice. Because those guys are about as resistant to fire as they are to dark. But hey, finally something without any weather conditions that make it hard to see. Though the indoor sections of course aren't as visually uh, appealing to me. I quite like the aesthetic of this entire DLC. Aesthetically as I said, it's probably my favorite. Gameplay wise, my favorite would be the first one overall, but just looking at it, I like this one. Of course, Old Iron King looks fantastic as well. But we've already seen that. Now I... You're probably wondering what's up with those guys down there, but we'll figure out in due time. And those guys tend to conjure up weapons out of nowhere. It is a pretty obvious tell. And even though you can't see it here, because I screwed it up, you actually can backstab those guys. So feel free to actually circle around them and then just do a backstab. And yep, we cannot even use a flame butterfly to light up a torch because in those weather conditions, we cannot light a torch. Just in case you were thinking we could probably melt the ice of those chests by, you know, just holding a lit torch pretty close to it. Nope, not gonna work. So this room is... It's a good idea to actually bring poison here, honestly. These crates will block people, which makes it pretty easy to lock onto them. Even if they are already aggro and come close to you. So you can just cast some spells or do some other ranged attacks. Firestorm, as you can see here, actually works phenomenally. But I reckon if you have something like a Poison Cloud or Toxic Cloud or even Dark Fog, it'll do quite a number on those guys. Because as stated already, they do have a tendency to get poisoned more quickly than most other enemies that we've encountered. And we even killed the poor dog. And as pleasant as that was to be able to see clearly, well, we're now back out in the open again. Now thankfully the vision isn't too bad. We can basically see very well, it's just that whenever there's something in the distance, we might not be able to actually tell what it is or, well, see it at all. Because we couldn't see it, but there was quite a bit of scenery as we entered through the gate into the DLC, which we just could not make out because of the weather. And we're gonna see more of that just now, or rather we're gonna not see that. Because down there is actually uh, a little bit of a city to see, but... Just for a brief moment as we exit the, the cave there, due to technical limitations I suppose, we could actually see it relatively clearly. But right now we can't. It's a little bit of a shame that they hide this really, really, really uh, nice view from you that way. And this is something that I've noticed. 
enemies here tend to, for some reason, do a, a lot more damage to your weapons, so your durability depletes more quickly. This isn't much of a problem on the console versions, but I suppose it gets exacerbated by the frame rate issue on the PC version, because if you play this game on PC, in the durability loss tied to the frame rate, which would be durability loss when touching corpses or friendlies, will be twice as high because the frame rate is twice as high. Just regular durability loss for hitting enemies, of course, doesn't really have that effect. But it will cause your weapons to get destroyed more quickly. And I hate that this bonfire right here is not upstairs. Because, well, we will want to go back up there at some point, but we'll have to go through the entire area again. But, oh uh, well. Uh, you might have noticed a pattern by now. There's uh, much more big open spaces in this DLC than in the others. Well, with exception maybe of the Crown of the Sunken King, but... Even though it was more open, the uh, space to move and fight in itself was relatively cramped. Here we have a mostly really linear area, but still well designed area. That has a lot of open spaces to fight in. Of course, there's also level geometry involved, which makes things a little more interesting. Like, say, the big ice parts in that first big room that we encountered. And here we also have a couple of uh, parts that make it easier to actually hurt enemies and the likes. Still, I died. So let's murder that guy as quickly as we can as he gets up, because that actually makes things more easy. But due to the openness of these areas we're gonna go through now, you actually can uh, pretty reliably just run through those areas. Because, well, while there are a lot of enemies, you can easily find a decent route to just circumvent them. And if you die several times, you just really might go ahead and just run through some of those areas. And in fact, since spoilers, we have to go through here several times over, rather at least one more time for progression reasons. Well, we probably will run through portions of this area. And trust me, you can backstab those guys, even though you don't see me doing it. I'm just a little too far away to actually make it happen. So if you go further down that path I just, well, ignored and turned back around from, you get a hex called Dark Dance. But. For some reason, I chose not to get it here, on camera at least. But anyway, this is a little dead end that will probably screw you up if you try to run through this area without knowing that there's a dead end. And there's plenty of doors which we're gonna see that will make it so, well, we can't actually access it from the side we first encounter it from. And in fact, after being done with this area, we probably still won't know what's up with those doors. But there is something up with those and we'll figure that out. And those are probably the toughest regular enemies. They take way more hits than the small dudes we fought so far. And they actually do always have a shield and they use a lance, which 
can be quite devastating if they manage to hit you with a charge attack. Well, not worth sniping that guy if he has an invisible wall in front of him. So to our left here, there is a door at the end of this uh, path, but we can't open it yet. So let's not go there. We also can't do anything in here at this point in time except kill that guy. Which we don't need to do, honestly. Because all we can see here is a couple frozen chests, and hey, look at that, a frozen mimic. It's kind of a pity that we can't access those. But yeah, you might notice that we're now back on the outer wall outside of the city, which means that the weather is clear again. Just pointing that out. The entire blizzard thing is only inside of the town. And if I told you that a wizard did it, then... Well, I guess I wouldn't be too far off. And to our right here, there is a place that I don't want to go yet. You can barely see it, but right to the first ballista on our left, there is a invisible enemy. Basically invisible. You can see his greatsword, or rather could see it. At least for a little bit. And while we could go on ahead and fight those invisible dudes right now, I really don't feel like it. Well, I can't wait to open all those chests. By which I mean I can't wait to go through this entire area again to open all these chests that I just can't open at this point. But you might be able to guess what this is. Now it's not a shortcut. I'm sorry to say I wish it was one. But it isn't one. But I'm pretty sure you do remember this. After all, I did tell you to remember it, right? So, even though the other DLCs were pretty long too, this one is probably the longest. It has, as far as I can tell anyway, in my opinion, the longest main gameplay area. And it also is, well, the longest for different reasons. Which we will see, of course, once it gets relevant. For now, let's just take out that one guy there. There is something pretty cool which will save us some time later on that I want to do now. Might make you scratch your head for just a little bit. But trust me, it all makes sense. Alright. So that's taken care of. Let's run up here to this completely optional tower. Now right here there is a ladder. It's completely invisible, much like the enemies were invisible. And Ava is invisible. You will probably have guessed it by now, but there is something that makes things not invisible. And to find that thing, pretty obviously, is our goal for now. And here's one of the few chests that we actually can open. Splintering Lightning Spear... pretty pretty much is kind of, sort of, something like chain lightning. But it requires a ton of faith and even though I'm using a faith build or urging start out as one, I don't have quite enough faith to actually use it. Part of that might be due to the fact that I later repurposed this for hexes 
and later still upgraded my dexterity a little bit just so I could use the Espada Ropera at the minimum requirements of uh, about 20 dexterity. This of course is kind of necessary if you go through the DLCs, just just because they have really high elemental resistances in all of the DLCs. Though this one probably has the least resistant enemies, unless you're using magic. In that case, well, good luck. But dark and fire are pretty good choices. Not so sure about lightning, I never used lightning here. But I figure it'll do some amount of damage. So yeah, you might have noticed that we've almost circled back around to the beginning of the area because right there is actually the beginning of the area. There's those co-op totems and up above here is the bridge with the first bonfire. And if there's something that I would criticize this uh, DLC for is that there are way too many points of no return. Turn away. Yeah, these points of no return I talked about just now, they're just, there's too many and none of them are necessary really. But look at this, this is what we came for. And if you look closely you could see an enemy materializing down there. Well, he didn't materialize. It's just that he was invisible and with the priestess's eye we can now actually see all these things that were invisible before. So. Technically, if we felt like it, we could just use a homeward bone or our aged feather to go back to the bonfire and then warp back to the first one and go give Ava another try. But there's this whole area to explore, so let's do that instead. And yep, another door that cannot be opened. This is one of the things I think this DLC does cleverly. It um, it forces a lot of things on you that you can't do anything with, like frozen chests or doors you can't open, which will encourage you to come back here later and actually do some more exploring. But let's actually do that next time, we've traveled about far enough for one day. So see you again next time.